All right, Shalom Aleichem, and welcome back everybody. As we are preparing for Shabbat, this week being two parshiot, Parshat Nitzavim and Parshat Vayelech. Rabotai, when we come to these two parshiot, we know Chazal made it that we read these parshiot right before Rosh Hashanah. So there's definitely a connection to the holiday that's coming up. And let's take a look to see how we can use this last week to prepare ourselves for the day of judgment for the Yom Hadin. In this week's parashah, parashah Nitzavim, we read a pretty famous pasuk. The pasuk says, Ki ha-mitzvah hazot asha'anuchim mitzavecha hayom lo nifleti mimecha velo rechokahi. This mitzvah that I'm giving you today, it's not hidden, it's not far. Lo v'shemayim hi, it's not in the heavens. To say who will go in the heavens to get it for us. It's not across the sea to say who will travel over the sea to get it for us. In your mouth and in your heart to do. What is this mitzvah regarding to? Is it the mitzvah about Torah learning? Is it a mitzvah about Teshuvah? Perhaps both. The Ramban, Nachmanides, understands this psukim to be talking about teshuvah. Because a lot of people, they say teshuvah, oh, to return to Hashem, remember, teshuvah doesn't mean to be born again. You know, I'm, I'm somebody new. Teshuvah means to return to who I'm supposed to be. To go back to where I'm supposed to be, to be a good person, oh, to be a good Jew, that's too far. That's too much. I can't do it. So the psukim are telling you, no, it's very easy to do it. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth to do. Because every step back, every step closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a step in the right direction. We just have to start going on the way. The Rambam, in talking about Teshuvah and explaining the mitzvah, he uses an interesting Lashon. The Rambam says, he who sins should leave his bad ways, remove it from his mind and make a serious commitment in his heart not to return to the Averot that he did in the past. The Rambam, Mamanadi says, Teshuvah should leave his bad ways. Why does the Rambam say he should leave his bad ways? The Rambam should write, Mamanadi should write, he should Go away from the Averot. Why do you say leave his bad ways? The drachim, the path that he's in. That's what he should leave. So the Altam in Novardak, he would explain. Based on the Gemara, Mesecha Kiddushin. The Gemara tells us. That the first time somebody does an Avera. He feels very bad about it. Oh, imagine someone keeps kosher, and then he goes into a McDonald's and, or a Taco Bell and he buys himself a non-kosher food and he eats it. Imagine how much guilt he feels. But the Gemara tells us, the Talmud tells us, if Has Shalom he does it again, he already feels it's not so bad. It's okay. And there are those who say if he does it a third time, he makes it into mutar. into mitzvah, not only mutar. The more he does it, now he thinks it's a good thing. So what happens is, says the altar, that when we do things again and again, we we'll get into a certain habit. And we get into a certain routine. We get into a certain lifestyle. And when a person's in a lifestyle that goes against the Torah, it's very hard for him to change that lifestyle. People will say, for 50, 60 years, I've been doing it this way. I've been doing it that way. I've been going and doing things against the Torah for so long. What, now I can change? It's too hard. The Rambam says, you have to leave your ways. The ways you've made up in your mind how to behave. The ways you've made up in your mind how to do things. You know, the, one of the marks... One of the simanim, one of the marks of a smart, wise person who someone's continuously learning. 
people who continuously learn, they're people who are smart because they want to know more and more. They're always looking how to better themselves, how to better how they behave, how they do, how they act, how they think. That's what the Rambam is telling us. Leave your old ways and come to the new ways. Come to the proper ways. Come back to do Torah mitzvot ma'asim tovim. This perhaps explains the altar, what it means in the Pasuk. The Pasuk says it's not so far away from you. You think you're stuck 60 years, 50 years, 40 years doing something some way. You can't change. It's not true. It's close. If you want to change it, you can do it. You just have to want to. You really have to want to. But there's something more you have to be able to do. Harav Moshe Aaron Stern, Zechazadik Lebracha, would tell a story about the 1920s, cars, automobiles came to Yerushalayim, came to Jerusalem. And there were some Jews who started driving a car on Shabbat. And there was a rabbi in town, his name was Rabbi Moshe Friedman. And when Moshe Friedman saw a Jew driving a car on Shabbat, he would start to sing Shabbat, Shabbat, and he would sing songs about Shabbat. So people would see the rabbi and they say, why are you singing Shabbat, Shabbat when you see cars driving on Shabbat? He says, or Rabbi Freeman answered the people, I'm not singing because of the, the guy driving in the car. I know he can't hear me. I know it doesn't help him. But I'm singing it for myself. Because once I see Hilu Shabbat, once I see someone desecrate Shabbat, one time, two times, you get used to it. You're no longer sensitive to it anymore. I remember the muscle for myself growing up in Borough Park. You don't see Hilu Shabbat really. Stores are all closed. There's almost no cars on the street. Shabbat, like many places in Eretz Yisrael. And then, unfortunately, not unfortunately, and then life moves on. You move to a different part of New York. And you see, first of all, there's a lot more going there. So there's suffering going on. The, the day is busy. Cars are moving. But then you see Jews. Bim Hadel Shabbat. Some of them with kippot on. Some with kippot off. And there's no busha. There's no embarrassment. And, and, and at first week, I remember feeling, ah, oh, what's this? Where did I come to? How, what, what's happening here? And then two weeks, and then three weeks, and then unfortunately over the next six years that I lived there, it was a... Um, Karagil. Yeah, Karagil, it became a regular. So that guy goes in the elevator on Shabbat, and I walk up the stairs. You know, it's... it's, it's, it's you, we lose it. So Moshe Aaron Stern says, I'm singing Shabbat, Shabbat. So I remember that it's Shabbat and how holy Shabbat is. It's for myself. But Moshe Aaron Stern explains that's the story that we have in the Gemara Mesechet Abu Dazara. And Daf Yud Zayin Omer Aleph and 17a in the Gemara and Abu Dazara tells us the story, a famous story of Rabbi El Azar ben Durdaya. He was called a rabbi, but he wasn't originally. El Azar ben Durdaya was a terrible guy. He was a man who visited many houses of ill repute. And he spent much of his money being with improper women and having improper relationships. And once someone told him, there's a certain zona who lives very far and she takes a huge amount of money to be with her. And so he said, I've, I've done so many Averot and I've tried so many different things. I need to try this as well. So he takes a bag full of coins and he went and he crosses seven rivers to get to her. That's how determined he is to get to her. He's with her. He's about to sin. He's about to make the Avera. And she tells him, just as the ear cannot return to its place of origin, can never return back to where it came from, so to you can never return to your God. It's over. And what does he do? He hears this Musa and he runs out. 
He doesn't sin with her. He goes and he, he sits between a mountain and the foothold. And he says to the mountain and to the footholds, he says to them, please daven for me. Ask Hashem to have mercy on me. And the mountains answer him back, before we daven for you, we have to daven for ourselves. We're not going to get into what all this means. But let's get to the story. And then he says, he says to the Shemaim Baharit, to the heaven and the earth, daven for me, pray for me. And the heaven and earth say, we can't pray for you, we need to pray for ourselves. He says to he, he says to the moon, the sun, daven for me. And they say, we also can't daven for you. He says to the stars and the mazalot, the constellations, daven for us, daven for me. And they say, we can't daven for you, we have to daven for ourselves. Omar, he said, in hadavar talui elabi. This whole thing is dependent on me. He put his hand, his head between his knees. He burst forth crying, and his soul departed. A bat call, an echo of a voice came out and said, "Rabbi Elazar ben Durdaya is coming to Olam Haba. He became a rabbi. He did tshuva. When Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rabbi, the great Yehuda Hanasi, heard this, he cried." He says, Yesh kone shanim. Take some people so much time to get to Olam Abba. And there are some people who get it right away. And not only did he do tshuva, they called him rabbi. They gave him the title. They gave him smicha. They made him a rabbi. What's going on in this story? You see... Rabbi Elazar ben Durdaya realized something very important. Im en ani li, mi li, says the Pirkei Avot. If I am not for myself, who can be for me? A lot of times we have people, they want to do tshuva, but they say, I need a better rabbi. Or they say, I need, I need a better job to do tshuva. I need a different this, I need a different that. No, 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 no. El Azab ben Drudaya says to the whole world, daven for me. He realizes that unless he davens for himself, there's not going to be any change. Says Rabbi Moshe Aaron Stern, this is what our Pasuk is telling us. Some people think that to do tshuva, you got to go to Shemayim. You need a new rabbi, you need an angel to help you. Some people think it's over the, over the yam. It's across the river. I need to live in a different place. I need to do something else. What does the Torah say? No. It's right there by you. To do tshuva, it's very easy. It's right next to you. It's in your mouth. In your heart. You have to be determined to do it. He realized that he has to do it. And when he does it, he was zochet to be a rabbi. Why? Because when you really want to do something, and that's what Yehuda Nasi was crying about. What was Yehuda Nasi crying? Yehuda Nasi is a rabbi. He is a rabbi. He's a guy. I mean, called Kaiser of all of Israel. What is he crying for? He's saying, "Here, look at a guy. Realize that it's up to him, and in a minute was able to change everything." But you have to want to. You have to want to. As much as I want someone to do something, and as much resources I will throw at them, and as much support that I will give them, unless they themselves want to do something about it, absolutely nothing will happen. That is our first lesson from this week, Parasha. Number one, what do you have to do? You have to do it yourself. You have to decide, I am in charge of my destiny and I'm going to do something about it. And now what do you do from this point? So this leads us to our second lesson in this week's parasha. Now that I know it's up to me, what do I have to do? We have in this week's parasha another interesting pasuk. The pasuk tells us, Hashem Moshe Rabbeinu, 
is telling Klai Yisrael, right by Rabbi from Parshat Kitavo to the end of Sefer Devanim, is Moshe Rabbeinu's last day on earth. From Kitavo until the end, to Zut Beracha, is all the last days. It's a pretty long last day, if you ask me. Right? And he says over here, and it says, look today, I'm giving you good and bad, the choice between good and bad, between life and death. I'm giving you, and then it says over here, Hashem says, Moshe Rabbeinu tells the Jewish people, choose life. Okay. So, Avram, Yosef, I come to you and I tell you I have two choices for you. Life or death. What will you choose? Life. life. Most people can choose life. So why does the Torah have to say, <laughs> choose life? Obviously, if you're giving me a choice between life and death, everyone's going to choose life. So why is the Torah saying, <laughs> choose life? What else would I choose? I saw such an interesting shot of what I the Kitab Sofer says. What an amazing idea. He says, because the truth is the only thing we could do is choose. The Pasuk could have said, Telech Bederehaim, walk in the path of life. Doesn't say that. It says, Uba harta Choose life. Says the Kitab Sofer. Because the truth is, to do the right things, and to do the right stuff, and to follow the Torah, Mitzvah, and do Ma'asim Tovim, it's impossible. It's impossible to do it. It's so much to do. It's so much to learn. But you know what you could do? You can choose to want to do it. And if you choose to want to do it, then guess what happens? HaKadosh Baruch Hu helps you with everything else. As Chadal tell us, Hashem ozro lo yuchalo. If Hashem wouldn't help us, we wouldn't be able to do it. We don't have the kohot. We don't have the ability. We don't have the strength. We don't have the wisdom. The only reason why we can do it is because we're showing Hashem that we want to. To if a person comes to get purified, he gets help. Our job is just to choose to do the right thing. See here? First, we know it's up to us. What's up to us, says the, the Kitab Sofer. Right? What's up to us is to choose to do the right thing. Now, what does it mean to choose? So, some people have an idea. To choose means to think to do the right thing. That's not enough. Right? If a Rebbe had a bunch of candies, and he had like 10 candies, and he tells one of the boys in the class, yeah, you said the right answer, you were good today, you can get a candy. Which candy would you like? And the kid says the yellow one, and he walks away. Right? You want the yellow one, and the Rebbe's saying you can take a candy, you gotta take it. You gotta do an action. Meaning it's not enough just to think about doing the right thing. Ubahartab Haim means to choose life, to choose life. I have the only thing I can do is choose, but how do I show what I chose? I have to do an action for it. I have to do something about it. I have to do something. I have to move something. Here in the Et Haim, he says it's an example like this. Imagine you had your rich uncle, okay? Your rich uncle says, I built you a house, it's a mansion. It's yours, completely yours. Only on one condition. I'm not giving you the key. You got to find a way in. And once you get in, it's all yours. So what would you do now? Look for the entrance. Okay, everything's locked. What would you do? Keep looking. Locked, locked. You can't get, no, 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 no way in. Break the wall. You break it down. Because once you break it down, it's yours. You got a full 30, 34 room house. You got the jacuzzi, you got the spa room, you got the gym room, you got the computer room. With every room you need, it's all there. Multiple bedrooms, pools, indoor, outdoor. All that you have to do is to break the door down to get inside. That's what that's Haim says is here. You got to choose. You, you can't afford the 34-room mansion. You can't. 
All right, the 60 room mansion, whatever it is, the $9 million mansion, you can't. But how can you get it? Hashem is giving it to you. You just have to enter through the door. It might be locked. You have to make a choice. If this is where I want to go. We say, we say, how, how praised and worthy are the Jewish people. That who is mitahir us? Who purifies us? Who gives you purification? HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Because why? It says in Pasuk, Mikva Yisrael. Hashem. That Hashem is our Mikva. It means Hashem is our hope. But we translate it as Mikva, as going into a Mikva, which means Hashem is our Mikva. Explains it to Hayim. That what? If I have a Mikva right next to me, if I don't go inside of it. I'm sitting right outside the mikvah. In my mitahir, do I get purified? Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there two days straight, right next to the mikvah. Mm-hmm. I have my two feet inside, but I'm not going further. Do I get mitahir? No. no. You gotta go inside the mikvah. You gotta do an action. Hashem is here to purify us. Hashem will give us everything that we need. But in order to get it, you have to choose. And how do you choose? By acting on it, by doing something about it, because what's what's most most people's actions? Most people's actions are, yeah, I want to do tshuva, yeah, I want to change. It's a good idea. He thinks about it from year to year. Every year, same stories. Thinking about it, thinking about it. Nothing changes. Why? Because he doesn't put. He doesn't. Uh, do it. He doesn't put his hands. He doesn't make it happen. It's all theoretical. Theory is great. But you have to put it into practice. You have to do something about it, Rabotai. We have to do something about it. You know, on Rosh Hashanah, we read the Akedat Yitzchak. Every day we read the Akedat Yitzchak. But Rosh Hashanah, we also do, so far as related to the binding of Isaac, and the ram, and the whole story with Abraham Avinu. But why do we call it Akedat Yitzchak? What's an Akedat? What's what's that word mean? It means to tie up. That Abraham Avinu tied up Yitzchak. Why do we call it like that? Why do we call it Akedat Yitzchak? The tying up of Yitzchak. Says the Ketav Sofer. Is that Yitzchak wanted to be tied up. Yitzchak said to Abraham, I know you have to shecht me, but I'm scared that my reflex would be would be to stop you. But I want to make this what I Kadosh Baruch Hu said, what Hashem said to do, I want to do it. But I know I might stop you. So you know what? Tie me up so I won't stop you. He did something about it. He said, You know what? Tie me up. Do something so we can do this mitzvah together. We have to understand what our problems are, where our deficiencies are, and what we can do about it, and do something about it. You know, Rabotai, all the beginnings are hard. All beginnings are hard, but just the beginning. Because once you break down that door, everything is yours. Everything is open. There's a story I, I always say with this concept. It's not entirely related closely, but the story is related that you have to do something in order to see a change. There was a guy, every day at work, imagine your coworker pulls out his lunch bag, takes out his sandwich. He looks at his sandwich and utters very loudly, ugh, peanut butter again. I hate peanut butter. Every single day at work, the same story. The guy takes out his peanut butter sandwich and says he hates peanut butter. So now, you're already getting tired. This is a week after week after week. So you're the nice guy and you walk over to him and you say to him, listen, Charlie, I know it's none of my business, but every day I notice that you really don't like peanut butter. You know, why don't you have whoever's packing your lunch at home, whether it be your wife, your children, your mom, I don't know who's preparing you, whoever's preparing you, just tell them you don't like peanut butter. Get something else. We don't have to hear every single day that you don't like peanut butter. And 
the man, this child, he looks at this guy and says to him, I'm what are you talking about? I myself do. He says, I don't have a wife. No one packs my lunch. I'm packing it myself. See, what I There are some people, every day, they'll do the exact same thing. I don't like it. But there's no change. They're not doing anything about it. They're not, they're, they're still buying the peanut butter. They're still putting it on the bread. They're still taking it to work. Instead of getting up and actually changing something. In order to get a change, you have to choose. So these two ideas are really closely related. The idea number one, to know that it's me. That I have to do something. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to choose. But choosing in thought is not enough. It has to be choosing in action. That I'm to do the right thing. And then once you do that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give you everything that you need. Abutai, I want to take a look at our third and final lesson for this week's parasha. In this week's parasha, in Parashat Vayelech, we have the final of the 613 mitzvot that are brought down in the five books of Moses, in the Torah. And it's in um, Divarim, Perik Lamed Aleph, Pasek Yutet, as it says, Ve'ata kitvu lachem et hazot. And write this song. It's a mitzvah of writing the Sefer Torah. A mitzvah that's incumbent on every Jew to have a Sefer Torah written or write one for himself. Exactly the, 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 um, the particulars of this halacha we talked about in the past. It's not for the tonight's share. But it is a mitzvah 613. To write a Sefer Torah. Now it's interesting. Why does the Torah call the Torah itself? A song. If you would ask me to define the Torah. Maybe a law book. Maybe the history of the Jews with laws. But a song wouldn't be one of them. What's, what's the idea of a song? So we talked about it a little bit last year. On the Shabbat morning. Today I want to take a little different approach. From the Ketav HaKabalah. The Ketav HaKabalah. Writes an interesting idea. He says the word Shir. Shira. Shir. Shin Yudresh. Is related to the word. Yashar. What does Yashar mean? Straight Being straight. Mm. Being straight. Being a man or a woman of integrity, of honesty, of doing the right thing. That, he says, is the relationship between shir and Torah. Because if a person plays music and is off key, the whole song sounds bad. If a Jew walks around and has shalom does the wrong thing, he's now portrayed the entire Torah in the wrong lights. You understand that every time we're doing what the Torah says, it's like a symphony being played. These are the great people that God chose to, to, to be the light unto the nations, doing the right things. And we has to shalom, do the right thing. It's like we broke a chord on the violin. The whole thing sounds off now. We have to be people of integrity, people of honesty, being straightforward people, people with respect to everyone. This is what it means. This is what it means to be a yashar, to being a straight person. You know, the Sefer Bereshit, another name for Sefer Bereshit is Sefer HaYashar. The upright, the book of the upright. Why? Because the book of Bereshit goes through Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, Isaac, Yaakov, Jacob, the 12 brothers, and how all of them acted and behaved. And we learn from them so much Musar, so much information of how to behave like a Jew. Because that's our job. Our job is to learn the Torah and to sing the Torah. And how do you sing the Torah? By behaving properly. Because that is the loudest song you can sing. There's a story here. They said that Rav Aaron Soloveitchik, he was... Uh, commuting between Chicago and New York and he was taking a plane 
He traveled regularly between the two cities of Chicago and New York. And one time his mother-in-law, who lived in New York, wanted to visit her daughter in Chicago. And she did not want to fly. So Rabbi Aaron Soloveitchik went with her on train from New York to Chicago. And when they came to the train station, the guy behind the counter said, you're in luck. Today we have a, we have a sale. Spouses go for free. Buy one, spouse goes for free. So they tell Rav Aaron Soloveitchik that you and this woman, who they were assuming to be his wife, which was actually his mother-in-law, could go on for one ticket. And Rav Aaron Soloveitchik says, I'm sorry, but this is not my wife. This is my mother-in-law. We'll pay for two tickets. And the agent said, listen, we don't look for marriage licenses here. Really doesn't matter. It's okay. You can go. And he says, I'm sorry, but she's not my wife. The, the, the rule is um, spouses go for free. We would pay for two tickets. He says, okay, let me get the supervisor. The supervisor comes and the same story. He says, look, you look like her husband. She looks like your wife. We don't ask any questions. One ticket and go on for free. The second one. What do you care? The agent tells, the, the supervisor says to Ravaran. Ravaran says, I care because she's not my wife and I have to pay for her. This is a man of integrity. I don't know how many of us would be able to do that. What, free? How many? <laughs> Everybody for free. Can't come on, right? But no. People of integrity, upright people will say, the rule is the rule. And here I have to do what the rule is. Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky is a chatzadik bracha. He was a rav in Toronto before becoming a Shashiva in Torah Vida. In one Purim, someone came and gave him a silver platter. On Shalach Manot, on a silver platter. Gifts of food on a silver platter for Purim. A couple of days later, the man who gave him the silver platter sees Rav Yaakov in a pawn shop, in a thrift shop, with the silver platter, with the silver tray. And he got very upset. I gave him the silver tray as a gift and he's taking it to the pawn shop. He comes to the shul and he tells the president, what is this? We give him a present and he pawns it off. So the president of the shul called Rav Yaakov, said, what's going on? Why would you take someone's gift to the pawn shop? And Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky said to them, there's a halacha in the Magen Avraham that says if a rabbi gets a present, it's considered part of his salary and he has to deduct it from his salary. And so since I got a silver platter, I need to know how much it's worth so I can tell you how much to take out of my next paycheck because I got paid with the silver platter. Do you hear this? Yashrut, uprightness. How many people can do that? How many people can say that? Ah, they gave me my gift and I'll take more, you know, and I'll take the full salary plus a bonus. But this is Yashrut. And when the people see us acting this way, when the people see us acting this way, that we're acting appropriately, we're doing the right behavior, then how much so do they see the song of Torah being played out? They see the light and they join and they become part of the symphony. And may we be zocher to live a life of shira, to live a life of yashar. Abutai, to quickly sum up in three lessons from this week's parasha. We have lesson number one, that it's all up to us. It's not far away. It's not across the sea. It's not up in the heaven. It's up to us to want to do tshuva. And if we want to, there's nothing that can stop us. And we can all reach the highest levels. And what do you have to do? Second lesson, you have to choose. Because that's all we can do. The rest of it comes from God. How do you show your choice? By doing an action. And our third and final lesson was that we should strive to live a life of Yashrut. Living a life of being Ish Yashar, an upright individual 
that when people see us, they see what the Torah is. They see what the song of Torah is. Should we be zorched to continue to sing? Be zorched to shim mishiach tzibkenu. To zorched to a real good judgment day. Be zorched that's going to be coming next year, next week, and and, and next year. Uh, we should be zorched to see many things, many good things, mm-hmm. only good things now and always. Shabbat shalom lekulam. Mazal Baruch.